Another very random review for you today, and that is because I am watching only movies recommended by you. But today we're gonna to be talking about Scalpel from 1977. Scalpel was recommended to me by a Posty during my live stream, my pick what I watch for June live stream. So thank you to those of you who are able to come. Maybe I'll spoil about half the movie and I'm not gonna spoil the ending. So this is an American film. Like I said, 1977, who directed this? Directed by John Grismer. And when Posty recommended it, they said it was like um, a horror slash drama. And I was like, a drama? <laughs> Completely forgetting that I love Lifetime movies, which are all qualified as dramas. But anyway, I didn't know what this was gonna be like. But yes, coming out the other side, I will definitely say um, horror, thriller drama is how I would describe this movie. So what is Scalpel about? This is about a doctor named Philip Reynolds and he is a plastic surgeon. He's also just very wealthy from a very wealthy family. We are in Georgia, okay? We are in the deep south and this is old money we're talking about. When Philip's father-in-law passes away, he leaves a bunch of money to Philip's daughter, Heather. He leaves her $5 million. But uh, the thing is, Heather has been missing for a year because she ran away. So Philip is hanging out with his brother-in-law one night and they drive past, I think it's a strip club, and there's a woman in the middle of the road and she has been severely beaten, particularly in the face. So being a doctor, Philip gets out and assesses her, clears her airway and gets her into the hospital and, you know, saves her life. And like I said, her face has been destroyed. So being a plastic surgeon, he decides to reconstruct her face. And he's looking at this photo he has on his desk of his missing daughter and thinks like, well, maybe I'll just make this girl look like Heather. You know, on one hand, it's the logical explanation. You don't know what this girl looked like before, so just give her the face you know best, right? But um, there's also another motive here. If Philip can make Heather appear, then Heather can get that money, right? So it's not spoiling too much. I mean, I could tell immediately that's where this was gonna be going. Philip wants this Jane Doe to look like Heather and then impersonate Heather so that they can get that money. And as I predicted, um, Jane Doe agrees. So there is like a little bit of horror when it comes to like the violence against Jane and then like the Frankenstein-y reconstruction and like the time in which she is healing. And after that, it does kind of turn into a drama, but it's there's just like a lot going on. So it's almost like a crime drama. In this film, there are so many twists and turns. Like just when I think that was the last twist, there's another one. So it's one of those fun movies where the third act is like, twist, 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 surprise. So I enjoyed that. I think um, Jalo lovers will enjoy that as well. So let's talk about the setting. We are in Georgia. I think they're saying DeKalb County um, and somewhere close to Atlanta. And this is, yeah, Georgia in the 70s. But it does have like a little bit of a period vibe to it because this family is so aristocratic, you know, like antebellum vibes, even though it is is modern day being the 70s. You know that I like to criticize Southern accents in movies. I don't have much to say about these accents though because they've got that like, again, that old money accent, which is a bit different than a normal Southern accent. And it is not an accent that I hear on a daily basis. So I can't like, overly criticize that. It was fine for me. I think it was fine. And I don't know what, if these actors are Southern. Maybe they are. Speaking of the actors, let's talk about the characters real quick. Dr. Philip Reynolds, he was an excellent character. Not necessarily a good guy, yet he still like was um, 
enchanting intriguing you kind of like I mean you like his face you like his voice he seems like he knows a lot so he has this sort of trustworthiness about him anyway he's played by Robert Lansing I'm not sure I've seen him in anything else but he was lovely then of course we have Heather and I love her and she is played by Judith Chapman and just to give away a little bit Judith plays a dual role in case you couldn't predict that. She's playing Jane, the reconstructed stripper, and she's playing Heather. In a way, this feels like some sort of strange and twisted parent trap. But yes, Judith Chapman was lovely. I think she did the Southern aristocrat thing really well. And she just has a, like an adorable face with these beautiful round features. And I liked her very much. There's a fairly large cast to this movie because they're part of a big family and everything, so I don't really need to go into anyone else. Those are our main players. The film is pretty interesting also in that not much is ever revealed about Jane because as soon as she wakes up and gets unwrapped, she looks like Heather and then she's trained basically to be Heather. So we don't learn anything about who she was or even like why she got beat up in the first place. Like, I kind of want to know. I wonder what happened. And we also don't know much about like who she is as a person um so she kind of is this blank slate sort of character almost like a dummy character the overall vibe of this movie it it does feel kind of like a lifetime movie which is probably like why posty recommended it to me because it's a little bit like a mystery thriller crime lifetime movie so there's definitely a lot of elements there that hit the Venn diagram with stuff I've been into. And I really did like the film. I had fun watching it. I was invested. I was like, honestly, I was relieved. I've been relieved by these choices from you guys so far because I was thinking like, man, I'm going to be watching a lot of stuff that like I don't like. <laughs> but I actually have really been liking all of these. So thank you. It's been a great journey. Even though this does kind of feel like a Lifetime movie, it's not. It has like a little bit of a made for TV feel, feel kind of, but it feels less throwaway. It feels less disposable than a TV movie does. And also we do have like bloodshed and violence and a little bit of like gore. Yeah, man, I'm remembering the surgery. There's surgery scenes and stuff. And then there's also nudity and sleaze and adult and gross content. <laughs> So it's definitely not like a Lifetime movie, okay? It's elevated. So while this movie and its overall plot obviously is silly and absurd and ridiculous and unrealistic, the film still like stays very level-headed, very well-balanced and takes itself seriously enough. It's not like too campy or you know what I'm saying? It takes itself seriously even though it's a ridiculous plot it's still a really really good watch i'm able to suspend my disbelief as they say this is a very easy watch a very fun watch um i'm gonna say it again i guess popcorn movie i would probably like say to watch it sober but it's like still chill like it's a chill watch you know you want to be sober so you can like keep up with all the twists and turns you know what i'm saying but it is like if you're having a night where you're like i just want to relax i just want to like have a tired movie night this could be the one for you looking on letterboxd while it is a drama it does seem to be very well received hold on on Letterboxd, it's got a rating of 3.5 out of 5, which is pretty freaking good for Letterboxd. And a few of the reviews I glanced at, like, people have good things to say. Even, like, people who I recognize from being in more running in the horror circles, they do like Scalpel. Try it out. It is on Tubi right now. Thank you so much to Posty for recommending this, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!